I think you have something you want to tell me. Quickie. So I just saw Wieners Out, and honestly, I think it might be one of the best movies that I have seen this year so far. I originally didn't see this movie because I find whodunits to be rather predictable. To me, personally, a good whodunit has to be as unpredictable as possible, and I think the best way to do that is to spin many, many webs and make sure they don't get entangled with one another. What convinced me to watch the movie the most was the cast. Let's actually knock them down one by one because I have a personal connection with all of them. For instance, even though I'm not a huge fan of the new James Bond movies, I like Daniel Craig. He is a really good actor and I'm happy that he's in this movie. I literally cannot think of a better choice. Jamie Lee Curtis is good in whatever she's in, so she was a no-brainer for me. I liked Toni Collette in Hereditary, so I was interested to see her play a completely different type of character, but the actress I kept brooding over was Anna de Amas, because I wasn't sure if she was a good actress, because I saw her in Knock Knock, and that movie is easily one of the worst movies I have ever seen in my goddamn life. But no one beat my excitement more than Christopher Plummett. If you for some reason haven't seen 1965's The Sound of Music, I, I don't know what you're doing with your life. All the actors and actresses I just mentioned did an amazing job here. Everyone gave a perplexing performance. Nothing felt short-handed in the slightest. This movie is just great all around. It's got good cinematography, good directing choices, good environment, and an excellent score. The characters are all great too, the detective is amazing. To me, a good detective should know around half of what's going on from the start. I was never really for the idea of a detective has to start from scratch, and that's why this detective is one of my favourite detectives in all media. The structure of this whodunit is different from what we've seen before. We are given more info than we would expect from this kind of movie, and it is a new technique that I wish more whodunits would take note of, but at the same time, I don't want it to be overdone. It boils down to the fact that Ryan Johnson is a good director and he found his own method. Another director should also try and do their own thing. Oh, and by the way, if anyone tells me again that Ryan Johnson isn't a good director because of that one Star Wars movie, I swear, I will rip off my eyes, stick them up my bum, shit them out, and put them back in. The movie is also really comedic. It's very humorous, but the humor never takes away from the suspense. Actually, you know what? There are a few scenes where that happens, but it wasn't constant. Another thing I was so happy with is how much prevalent the detective was. In most scenes, he sits in the background, but he still owns the room. This is idyllic because I don't really like it when the detective is the main focus, and I wish more whodunits realize this. This movie is probably the best whodunit movie we have so far, I'm not kidding. I do have some problems with this feature, so if you don't want spoils, then bugger off. 3, 2, 1, and here we go. My problems with this movie are literally just dumb nitpicks that are nothing more than just stupid character decisions that only really exist to drive the mystery further. For instance, Christopher Plummett's character tells Chris Evans that he is giving all the money to his nurse. Why did he do this? Because the movie wants him to. There's also another scene when a character finds out who the killer is and tells him to go to this address with a threat rather than just calling the police. And she's like, I knew it was you, then he kills her. I mean, what did you fucking expect? This is the dumbest scene in the whole movie. The main character also has this scene where she has to climb down this railing or whatever, and a piece falls off, and she just leaves it there for the detective to find later, and it was also pretty tongue-tied in that moment. One final issue that I had is a classic whodunit flaw. There are too many damn characters for the movie to handle. There are an average of 10 suspects, and some of them only have 3 lines, and some of them don't speak for a whole 40 minutes. If you're watching this by process of elimination, then it is pretty easy to cut off a couple of characters. It by no means ruins the movie, but it does sort of ruin the purpose of a whodunit. And no, I'm not telling the movie to get rid of these characters. You obviously need this amount of people so the mystery can be harder to pinpoint, but I just wish the movie would try to develop all these characters equally. I also think the ending is the best way this movie could have ended. The last shot is probably my favourite shot in the whole movie. 
So if you like whodunits, then yes, this movie is for you. If you like well-directed, well-acted, well-made movies that are great all around, then yes, please, please watch this. And you do not have to turn your brain off of this movie. It is way smarter than that. This is definitely one of the best well-written movies of the year, and it's one of the best movies I have ever seen. So I'm giving Knives Out a knife 9 out of 10. This joke was funnier in concept. Please don't make fun of me. Thank <laughs> you.